Welcome to my complete guide for how to beat Ninja Turtles easily and safely. This is Jack Everett. So you'll sort of notice the first thing you can do is just skip that first sewer. You can play it or not, like that sewer is not particularly dangerous. And sort of my purpose of this guide isn't to show you like the fastest way to beat the game or anything like that. It is just to show you how to beat the game safely and easily. I mean this guide is for anyone that had this game as a kid and just could never finish it. And so I'm going to show you how to do it the safest route possible. And so primarily I use Leo and I'll get more into that later. But you'll notice like I use Dawn here for this boss fight. And you can take damage here. You can take damage in that fight. That's fine. It doesn't matter. And the reason why is because you can just farm for pizza in this sewer right here. So immediately right after that, Leo is the only turtle that's taken damage so far, but he's taken so little that it doesn't even really register. But now it is. But what you can do is you can farm right here for pizza. So like every time you go into a sewer, pizza is going to be back and you can just farm for it. And I also wanted to leave the sewer to get this enemy set, because this enemy set's actually a little easier. We actually don't even need to fight that guy, we can just move on. Oh, we're gonna have to fight him now, though. Alright, so the first boss fight, if it's the frog, it's really easy. Just stand right here, and you just attack him. And it, this would be faster with Dawn, but... You know. I use Leo as my primary character, because Leo has a much better attack. His attack covers a really wide arc that's both in front of him and a little bit behind him. And that's why I like Leo as my primary character. A lot of people say Don is OP, but Don's attack is actually not very good, and I'll explain why. And I'll just use Don here, because I'm going to need him for this boss fight anyway. Don has a long range, but the problem is he attacks over top of enemies. So there's a lot of enemies that Don will just miss if you do the straight attack. And so a lot of times with Dawn, you have to end up attacking like this if you want to hit stuff. Okay, so for this first area, you'll notice that it's really basic and simple. And basically what you want to do is not take too much damage. Now I'll show you the easy way of doing the rock steady fight, which is just to go up here with Don and you can attack down him and whenever he jumps you'll be able to hit him. See when he jumps you can hit him. That's easy and all but it takes forever so I typically just like to fight him. But this is just a matter of how much skill you have in the game. So if you don't feel comfortable doing the rock steady fight down on the ground you can just jump up there and do it with Don and that's perfectly fine. It's a legitimate way to play the game. You know, we're just trying to win the game. We're not trying to prove how good we are or anything like that. That's all that this walkthrough is for. It's just to demonstrate how to win the game. Okay, so next up is the dam stage. The dam stage, the goal of this is to get to the top of the dam with at least two turtles intact. Now, I personally need two turtles to make it through the underwater part, but, you know, if you can, if you can do the underwater part with one turtle, that's fine too. Now, there are two pizzas in the dam stage. There's one half pizza and one whole pizza. So there is opportunity for recovery while doing this stage. There's going to be a boss fight here. And it's just a pretty simple foot soldier. It can be a different depending on what the enemy set for this stage is. So here's the half pizza. So we can get that. And you'll notice sometimes I play kind of sloppy just because it really doesn't matter that much. So with a lot of stages, what you need to do is take your time. Like, don't try to rush through things. A lot of times you want to bait the screen and get guys to appear. I'm just going to do this, this boss with Dawn just because it'll be faster. See, Don will kill that guy in two hits. Leo will take like four hits. But I like Leo because his attack covers a really wide range. And so it's really helpful. But it doesn't do as much damage as you can see there. Okay, so for certain enemies, like, there's just no point in fighting them.
we can just walk past those guys. And there are going to be a different enemy set here. I'll actually just use Dawn for this. He does them in two hits, so it's pretty, pretty handy. Actually, we were lucky to get these boomerangs on Dawn. I'm going to swap them out to uh, Leo real quick. And you can do this with boomerangs. You can swap boomerangs to different turtles. So I'm going to put half of these boomerangs on Leo, just so that he'll have boomerangs as well. Because since I use Leo as my primary character, it's very helpful to have uh, the boomer. I'll do three more on Leo. It's just very helpful to have the boomerangs on Leo because he's very they're they're very they're a very good weapon. They do as much damage as Don's bow. But they have a longer range. Okay, so coming up here, this is the hardest part of this stage in my opinion. There's a jump up here that we're gonna have to do. And there's a lot of guys you just don't have to fight. See, you can duck under that guy and you can jump over the previous one. And they're going to take two hits from Leo, so you might as well. Okay, this is the hardest jump in this stage. What I've found, and I may screw this up, is it's easiest just to hold left, and then once the turtle is right to the edge of it, press and hold jump. And that's it. And that's how you make it over that. And obviously, if I timed that swing better, I wouldn't have taken damage there, but it doesn't matter. But you'll see, I have all four turtles intact right now, so the underwater part's going to be a breeze. I can take a lot of damage here, and it doesn't even matter. Now, this is the route that I like to take for the underwater stage, which is, I mean, obviously, you're going to do this bomb first. But just wait. If you don't want to take damage, wait. I mean, I have four turtles intact, so I could just fly through this electricity, and it really wouldn't be uh, that bad for me. Now, I like to get this one up here first, and then go down. But you can go to the right, too. But either way, you're going to have to go back. You have to go backwards at some point, so I prefer going backwards at the top and just going forward here. Because, like, it, in my opinion, it takes longer to go backwards to get this bomb right here than it does to get the, the next bomb that we're going to get. Now, that seaweed down there is going to kill you in one hit, so you don't want to hit it. And this was like the dreaded stage for kids everywhere. Because it's like, you're underwater, there's a time limit, it's all scary and stuff. And the, like the first time I beat this stage, I was like super proud of myself. But now, this is just like a basic stage that just doesn't cause me any problems whatsoever. And I'm probably just going to take damage here. I always take damage leaving here. Like, you can make it out of this without taking any damage, but I almost always do. And this area, you can make it through this area without taking any damage too, and I have, but this is almost always the area where I just switch to Raph. I'm like, I'll go through it, and then switch to the next turtle. And I always switch to Raph, because it's like, all the turtles are the same underwater, so it doesn't matter which one. Whoops, didn't make it all the way over there. So it doesn't matter which turtle you pick, you know, so I'm like, just pick any of them. I'm going to play a little sloppy from here on out, just because I have, you know, all the turtles intact. But yeah, this level is not nearly as intimidating as the reviewers say it is. And one thing I want to say about this game is, this is like a really good game. It's a really good game. It's a very fun game. I'm going to switch a turtle just for safety's sake, just because I've been playing kind of sloppy. And this game is like... I mean, it's just a game that takes developing some skills. And, you know, you can make it through the game just fine, as I'm going to show you in this guide. Like, I've played this game a lot. So I basically perfected it where, to the point where I can't even really fail. And I'll just take damage going through there because it doesn't even matter. Because we're just going to get pizzas at the beginning of the next stage anyway. So that doesn't even matter. Okay, so now we get to watch a cool cutscene. And when I was a kid, I just thought this was the awesomest cutscene ever because I felt so proud of myself for beating that underwater stage. But nowadays, it's actually an annoyance because I'm like, I just want to get back to the gameplay and I, instead I have to watch this video. But I do think it's really awesome. You know, that's like straight out of the movie, where Raph yells, No! Or whatever. And I always liked how Shredder's hand is popping out of the TV. When we were kids, we said, like, if you put 3D glasses on, you could really see his hand popping out at you. And so Shredder here wants you to defeat the Foot Clan. He wants you to defeat him. Okay, so I'm going to show you what's required to get through this stage, plus how to make the rest of the game very safe. And so what we're going to do is we're going to farm for scrolls, and that'll be like the safest way 
to get through this game. And so you get to use the Turtle Party Van on this stage. Now the first thing you need to do on this stage is you go into this building here and you, f you farm for missiles. So a lot of this game with timing your weapon attacks and stuff, that's just a skill that you got to develop by practicing the game. Okay, so this guy is best to take... Well, actually, I forgot we have these boomerangs. This guy we can take out with boomerangs, otherwise he'll take like... Those guys, their heads come off, and so it takes two hits to get their heads to come off, and then two hits to get their heads with Leo. Don does it in one hit to get their head to come off, and then one more hit. But the boomerang, you know, we can just go straight through it. All right, the enemy uh, set switched up. And if you know this map, you know there's a pizza over there, but I never grab it on my way in. I always grab it on my way out because I think it's more helpful there. So we don't want that. I'll just put it on Raf. It doesn't matter. Raf is going to get scrolls anyway. Whoops, I meant to switch to my sword. Okay, so what we want to do is bait that fire guy to walk off the screen. So we actually need to go over a little bit further get him to walk off the screen and we don't want the one to come in on the right well he's not wanting to walk off the screen so okay so right there you can just make that incredibly difficult jump by positioning the turtle so that his feet are barely basically right on the edge and then jump up like I did there and you always want to make that jump because if you go around the long way it's just more dangerous because like look at all that crap down there oh whoops lost Leo's boomerangs too bad. And that's the worst thing that can happen in this game, actually, is, um, I'll just put this on Raph, is losing, um, boomerangs. So I'll actually just use these for now, just to burn them, whatever, and I'll grab this pizza for Leo. Now, you only need a farm for the missiles once, so you just need to go in, grab the missiles, and you're basically done. And then, here's the route that you need to take. You just go over here. If you shoot these guys, just shoot them once, wait for them to stop flashing, and then shoot them again. And then this guy here, he always just goes down and gets you, but I was in the right position, so he didn't get it. But it doesn't matter. Like, you can take a lot of damage in the turtle van, and it's fine. Okay, so here's the next phase that we're going to do. And what I find is, it's best to farm. We're going to farm for scrolls. Scrolls are, like, the best weapon in the game. And we want the other enemy set to do it. So we want this frog guy to be here. And then this guy here will just take three hits from Don. So I always switch to Don to take him out. And then the rest of the stage, we don't really have to fight much except for a boss creature. So there will be a frog jumping at us and you don't even have to fight it. Just stand here and he jumps down the ladder and you're done with him. And then up here, that fire guy won't be back when we walk back over, so we'll just take out whatever legs we have. Now on this screen, there's either going to be four fire guys or two fire guys. If there's four fire guys, jump in between them like this, take out those two legs, and then jump over, and you're done with that fight. Then there's going to be a little boss fight here. It'll either be this guy or a fire guy. If it's that guy, it's best to have boomerangs there, and it's, it's easiest, but it's also fine with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this three more times. I'm going to get 40 scrolls on Raph and 40 scrolls on Mike. And that will be good for the rest of the game. I found that 80 scrolls right there is enough to win the game with ease. And now, right now, I don't really need that, but we'll take it. We're going to just farm for pizza. And the way to get this pizza is you just hold right to fall off the edge and then at the last minute you turn around and you land on this platform. Then you have to do what I call the barely jump, which is where you just tap the jump and then he'll make it right over. Okay, so we'll just fill up Mike right now. So all our turtles are topped off, except for Leo. But we're gonna do this three more times, so that's opportunity to grab three more pizzas. So then just go back into the building and do it all over again. Sometimes with this frog guy, I like to take a whack at him as he's jumping down the pit just to say, uh, uh screw you, frog guy. <laughs> yeah, this is a very good game. It's a very fun game. And it's not nearly as difficult as everyone thinks it is. Like, you just have to learn the skills to play the game. And that's it. So, like, a lot of this maneuvering and stuff that I'm doing, you just need to practice. I mean, that's what it is. Like, if you play the game a lot, you'll be able to do this just fine without any trouble like when you first start playing the game you're gonna be pretty sloppy at it 
But the more you play, the more you'll be able to learn how to control these turtles, and you'll do quite well. Quite well playing the game. And then it, you'll just have a lot of fun playing it. Like, I loved playing this game when I was a kid, even though I never beat it. But I just didn't have the patience. Like, I wasn't willing to farm for scrolls. Alright, and so, like, that jump right down there, that's an opportunity to practice the barely jump. This is also an opportunity to practice the barely jump. Because you need to have that skill later on. Like, you... There's three levels of jump, and you need to be able to master two of them. You never really need to be able to do the mid-jump in this game. But you do need to be able to do the barely jump and the tall jump. But the tall jump is not hard to do because it's just hold the button down. And that's it. But the barely jump is a skill that you have to have, otherwise you won't be able to uh, finish this game. You won't be able to finish it at all because there's a part where you have to do it. And you'll probably have a lot of difficulty overall if you uh, can't do it. Whoops, I'm probably going to take damage here. Okay, I did not. So like, here's the barely jump, there's a mid jump, and then here's the tall jump. And so, you really don't need to be able to do the mid-jump at all. It never really comes in that handy. Now, the reason why I like 40 scrolls is... You can make it through the final stages without scrolls. But they make it really easy. And I found that 40 scrolls is about enough to make it through the game. Okay, so this hasn't happened yet, but sometimes there will be a guy up there. If that guy's up there, just immediately jump back, let him fall off, and then jump back. You know, we didn't see that happen, so I can't demonstrate it. But sometimes there's a guy up there. Maybe he'll be up there next time, but we're only going to farm for scrolls one more time. And then we'll be set for the rest of the game. The first time when I was first trying to win this game, I had scrolled for 99 scrolls on three turtles. That's overkill. Like, if you have 99 scrolls on three turtles, just use scrolls for the rest of the game. Like, you don't even need to use uh, any other weapons. <laughs> You'll have plenty of scrolls. I mean, you might walk over an item. But I found that 40 scrolls is a good amount of scrolls. Like, if you lose the scrolls on one of the turtles by accidentally walking over an item or losing the turtle, you'll probably still be okay. You know, the scrolls come in handy in a few parts in the airport. They come in handy in one part in this stage. And then they're very handy inside the Technodrome. Which is the main main prob problematic area. So, that's all. this is all the more scroll farming we're going to be doing. And we'll probably be fine. And you'll see that. The game will be very winnable. And... Leo doesn't need pizza, but I'm going to see if there's a guy up there. No, there isn't. So I wanted to show you that there could be a guy up there, but he didn't show up. Okay, so now we're just going to go to the last, uh, the last couple maps in here. Now, you can fire three bullets at once, but it doesn't help because those guys are invulnerable for a while, so you might as well just fire one, shoot them once, and then not. But also, like, you can take damage here. It doesn't even matter. You know, there's going to be pizzas in the next sewer anyway. Now, here's the part where if you can do it just right, you'll be able to fire one missile, take out a bunch of guys like that, and then take out a barricade at the end of it. Sometimes I screw that up, but if you're in the right spot, it's awesome to do that. You know, I really enjoy doing that. And yeah, just don't worry about guys running you over. It doesn't really matter that much. Actually, I think we're done all the barricades now, so... This guy, will just use a missile on him. Because you have three extra missiles. It only takes second, uh, seven missiles to get to the last map. And then here, just switch to items, because there will be a fire guy over here, and he's he can cause you some difficulty. And then I'll just use them here, because there will be a fire guy up here. And there will be a couple of bomb guys. And the enemy set just uh, switched up, so... But it doesn't matter. Okay, so here's where you have to have the skill of that barely jump. Okay? Hmm, I'm not sure what to do here. He'll probably fall off the edge. So right here, you have to be able to do the barely jump. If you can't do this skill, you won't make it over this jump. See? That's what happens. I didn't do it screwed it up. 
but that's fine. Like, it doesn't hurt your turtle at all, so... so but I'm recklessly taking damage there. Oh well, it doesn't matter. These guys are always easier to just get with, uh, with stars. I'd actually rather have the fire guy enemy set than the fly guy one, but it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so... Chop his tongue off. You can chop his tongue off forever. But yeah, just do the barely jump. That guy's gonna knock you off. Like, if you go too far to the left on that previous part, um, that guy will get you. But, um, okay, now at this part you want to bait the screen. So always jump over and then jump back. And then you can do a barely jump across there. For this part, just make sure you get that guy, otherwise he'll knock you off. You can do a barely jump there, you don't have to. Um, and then you want to bait the screen, get that guy to come. And then you can just do a barely jump across or you can do a tall jump. And then you can chop this guy's tongue off till he falls off the edge. So just wait for him to fall off the edge. Then do a barely jump across. You don't have to do a barely jump there, though. Just make sure you don't get hit by that. Bait the screen for that guy to come, and then you can do a barely jump across. For this part, walk forward, walk back, let the guy fall off, and then chop his leg off. Okay, for the next part, you gotta do an attack on the way down or you'll get knocked into the water. So just hold right. As you're going down, do an attack. We'll bait the screen here. Oh crap, this thing's gonna knock me into the water. Okay, I'm gonna do all that. Just. A little bit faster without explaining it now that I've explained it. Yeah, when that leg was on top of me, I knew there was. I was just gonna fall into the water and that was gonna be it. So. But it, like, doesn't matter. Like, you can do this as many times as you have to because. that pizza in there and there's a pizza at the end of it all okay but always bait the screen just make sure you bait the screen I'll do a mid-level jump there bait the screen for this guy I mean if you feel real confident in your skills you could just jump across and attack him chop this guy's tongue off but then just wait for him to fall or if you have boomerangs you could attack him with the boomerangs Bait the screen for the next guy. And like I said, walk forward, walk back. It doesn't matter if it's the fire guy or that guy. Both will walk off the screen. Part attack on the way down. And then freaking jump over this guy so that he doesn't get you. <laughs> and that's the easiest way to do that, actually. Just jump over that guy. Okay, so right here, boomerangs or dawn will help. Just use boomerangs. Actually, I'm going to swap all the boomerangs over to Leo just because like they're gonna be oh uh, Leo can't capture the boomerangs while he has stars so okay so now I only have six boomerangs left but that's fine better for Leo to have six boomerangs than those crappy stars okay so that gives Leo all the boomerangs so they'll be pretty helpful and I'll probably just use them here because there's gonna be some fire guys well, fly guys, because we got that enemy set. There's going to be another one at the end of it. The boomerangs make it really easy. Next part, it's just going to be these enemies. Can't even really... Well, this one's going to be kind of a pain in the butt, but... Normally I have the other enemy set here, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what enemy set you get in this game. Like, you're either going to make it or not make it, so... Actually, let's bait the screen, take this guy out with boomerangs. And then, we didn't scroll the screen over, so no one else should appear. This part, always go to the very top of the ladder, because you might get knocked down, depending on what enemies are up there. Alright, so here's the first scroll fight. This is a boss fight. If you do it correctly, you can do it in seven scrolls. I'll probably take more like nine, just because I always screw up a little bit. See, I missed a bunch, but it doesn't matter. It's, like, fine. If Raph starts freaking... Uh, beeping, I'll swap out of Raph. But... Once you get this guy into the right spot, 
you just have to stand up there and you can hit him and you won't take any damage. But you can also just jump around a lot. Now it doesn't matter how much damage you take there as long as you don't lose any turtles. Because we can immediately farm for pizza at the beginning of this stage. So like I only have two turtles with damage. And then you can farm for pizza right away so it doesn't matter how much damage you take there. Now you want to farm for pizza with the other enemy set. So if you get that Rat King guy, swap till you see this guy. And this is going to be why. It's going to be a lot easier to farm for pizza with that guy. Number one, sometimes he just completely disappears like that. And then when we farm for Leo, I'll uh, show you how to do it if he doesn't disappear. Now be careful not to be standing on the ladder, ladder when you fight those guys because it'll be really annoying. Okay, so I'll make sure that that guy appears uh, again by going a little further over. So he should be there. Uh, he's not appearing. Let me, uh... Oh, that's what I'm talking about, being on the ladder. So hopefully he comes back. I might have to do this again just to demonstrate uh, what I'm... What you can do here. Be, I'll, t I'll try to be real careful. Um, to make sure he never even leaves the screen. I think if I... Uh, he's just gonna be gone. I'll just explain what it is since he's probably not gonna be there. But what happens is, like, that guy walks back and forth. Now if you attack him, he'll just split into multiple parts. But what you can do is he'll walk this way, and you can just grab the pizza before he has a chance to turn around, and it's it's way easier than trying to fight um, the Rat King guy or uh, the other guy. I'm going to switch to boomerangs here just because the enemy up ahead is going to die a lot faster with the boomerang. Well, I still screwed it up. It doesn't matter. There's a pizza at the end of this anyway. Well, a half pizza. Now, we don't need the jump mans. I call those ropes jump mans because that's what we call them as kids because the icon just looked like a little guy jumping. On a, on a rope. These guys will be easier to take out with boomerangs. This guy we don't even have to fight because he's right there. And we'll... Now one thing about these Rat King guys, I call them Rat Kings, is once they're in front of you, they just start bouncing up and down and that's all they do. So usually when you fight them, hit them one time, back away, have them right in front of you, and then attack them. And you'll see me do that later on when, I, when we fight more of them. They're actually one of my most hated enemies. They cause me more trouble than most of the things uh, in the game. Yeah, all my turtles are at full. I mean, Leo technically has like an eighth of a piece of damage right now, but not enough to even show up. Yeah, and we already got a bunch of jump mants when we farmed for scrolls, so we didn't have to grab those ones up there. But that's all you need in the entire game. There is a part in Act 2 where you can use the jump mants, the ropes, to get across. Okay, so... Yeah, we're gonna have that guy. Oops, that was sloppily done. It doesn't matter that much though, because there's a pizza right up there anyway. And also, like, there's plenty of pizza uh, throughout this, so it just doesn't even matter. If you don't have those jump mans now, here I'm like just freaking make a run for it. I'm like, don't bother fighting those guys. Just make a run for it. There's a lot of parts where I'm like, just try to jump over guys. This isn't really one of them. You might as well fight this guy. I mean, it's faster to fight those guys with Dawn, but... You know, I mean... I prefer Leo. Leo's just easier to use. Okay, so the airport is kind of a maze, and I'm going to show you the best possible route to get through the airport. And right now, for sewer number two. So, like, you'll hit a guy back up, and then he'll just start bouncing in front of you. That's what I'm talking about. Fighting those Rat King guys. Hit him, back up, and then he'll just bounce in front of you, and then hit him once his invulner invulnerability frame goes away. There's going to be another one. Nope, there's not going to be another one. There's going to be a boss one, though. But it's just the same thing. Except he won't follow you as far, just because his head hits the roof. So real easy there, real easy. We don't want that. <laughs> we want to keep our boomerangs. Just duck under those guys. But a rat king guy is going to be up here. So 
You don't want to have those dragonfly guys on the screen while the Rat King's there, otherwise you're just going to end up taking a bunch of damage. There's going to be another one. So yeah, I mean, Dawn will take out all these guys faster, but Dawn causes me a lot of problems. I don't play as well with Dawn, so I prefer Leo. Oh, whoops, should have anticipated that. Okay. So that's a sewer. Now, here there's going to be two t uh, choices, and I'll show you the bottom one first, just to demonstrate it. So what I view is, like, this one looks easier than number five, and I'll show you why. Because, like, there's only two, three guys in there. But then number five has these spikes, so it looks all scary. And so the way I remember which one to take is, or number three, I mean, is the one that looks scarier because of all the spikes is actually going to be easier later on. So like the sewers later down the line are going to be easier than than this one. And this one's actually not that hard because like you can just walk across those. Now there's no choice about where, where to go here. So you always go in this one. And then I'll just uh, use Dawn to take these guys out. Now the airport just gets progressively harder and harder the further you get into it. So I also figure just freaking switch to boomerangs right away and just start using them because they they make it a lot easier. Because you're going to be facing these dragonfly guys and the boomerangs will kill them in one hit. But if you don't line yourself up correctly it doesn't even matter. So. I'm running low on boomerangs just because. Okay, so now we're in freaking Dawn territory. Leo's taking too much damage, so we don't want to risk losing him. But yeah, those things just cause a lot of trouble, so. But it's fine. Like, there are areas to farm for pizza in the airport, and like, you need to know where they are. Otherwise, you're gonna end up screwing yourself over. I think there's going to be a pizza in this sewer here. No, not this one, but. I'm just going to take this guy out to be safe, and then of course you can just get right across here without ever fighting those guys down there. Okay, so now the bottom one would have been the hard route. If we went the hard route, we would have had to deal with, deal with those magnets and stuff, and like, it's overall more dangerous to go the other route. So now we end up here, there's just a quick boss fight, and then there's going to be more choices up ahead. So here, if you go straight up, I think you can farm for pizza if you go this way, but you have to go in really far, and it doesn't go it doesn't go anywhere else. So I'll show you another thing too. So this is the sewer we're going to go in, but there's another sewer over here, and if you go in this one, which I'll show you, you'll be able to rescue a turtle right here. So if you lost a turtle, you can rescue a turtle. But if you go through that way, it's a lot harder than if you go in this sewer right here. This is basically the easy sewer. Now if those bombs hit you, they just do a little bit of damage. It doesn't like kill you all the way or anything. Now this is what I call scroll territory. Like this, this sewer is just a lot easier to use these scrolls. And so I just use some scrolls here. I'm like, it's fine. And you always take damage here. Well, you don't always take damage there, but most of the time you do. So I'm like, screw it, just start using scrolls, it's just safer. And then we can farm for pizza right here. So I'm actually going to have Leo grab this pizza. And Leo will have to grab another pizza, but that's fine. So to farm for pizza here, you go in with a turtle that you're going to get the pizza for last. Kill this guy down here. It's kind of a pain in the butt because you're falling off the edge the whole time. Then grab a turtle that needs some pizza. Just have him jump up, grab the pizza, switch back to the turtle that you're going to farm for last, and climb on out of there. When you go in there, just be attacking as soon as possible to hit these these things. Like, you're going to take a little bit of damage, but it's fine. Even if you lose the turtle. Well, I'll actually do Dawn for the last run. I'll just get Leo now. And I'll, I'll show you how to do this without doing the spikes this next time. You don't have to you know, jump in these spikes. I just did. And it looks like Don got some stars. So he could have that item. That's why you don't want to do it with turtles with scrolls, because, like, you can just destroy those. Okay, so to get it without hitting the spikes, just go over here 
wait for that laser to fire, and then just jump over, and that's how you get it without taking any damage. On the way out, I mean. Okay. So, the next sewer, is it this one? Yeah, it's that one. But I'll show you where we would have come from if we'd gone the harder route. Like, look at that. That lava down there, that will kill you in one hit. And, you know, you can't avoid that lava if, um, if you go that way. Now, we are going to have to face some lava no matter what. But, you know, we have to face a lot, a lot less. Alright, so there'll be probably a dragonfly guy, so just get ready to boomerang him, because the boomerang kills it in one hit. Get ready to take some damage here. Should have been on my sword. Lost a boomerang. This guy always causes me trouble, but you can take as much damage as you want taking that guy out, because... <laughs> um, he'll just get that pizza anyway. Alright, so probably wait for that laser to fire. Well, it's not going to fire at that distance, so... I'm going to need this boomerang. Okay, so I always take a lot of damage here. This is one of the worst sewers. A lot of times I like to do this with scrolls. For that guy, you want to get to this side of him if possible. That's the main thing that you want to do there, is get to this side of him. Now, this is the final lava jump. This is the only lava jump that you have to do. Now, what I do to do this safely is I do a barely jump from standing right here, turn around at the last second, and that's the safest way to do it. I don't even think you have to turn around, but I do anyway. And then just do a full-on jump. Just hold the jump button down and climb out of there, and that's how you make that lava jump. Okay, so this bottom sewer, I believe you can just farm for pizza here. And... I'll just show you how to do it. I don't normally do this, but it is doable. So, <laughs> so what you want to do is get this thing <laughs> and then freaking, you can grab the pizza and go out. There's actually a whole pizza further in, but honestly, like, this is not the easiest place to farm for pizza. Try to do it without getting those guys to split apart. Okay, there we go. So there's also a whole pizza at the end of this, which, you know, you can get too, but... I don't even normally go in the sewer at all. I'm just showing you that you can farm for pizza there. Alright, so here's another... Uh, actually, this is the last sewer. Okay, so this is the very last sewer. This is the worst sewer. You can lose a turtle here really easily. And I'm hoping I don't. But if I do, I'll show you what you do. If, uh, if that happens. There's going to be a dragonfly up here, so... Just have your boomerang ready so that you don't have to deal with it. And then you want to take that guy out if you can. Or if you stand in the right spot, he'll jump down that pit. But it's just easier to get rid of him. And then just attack. That laser's probably going to hit me if I don't jump down in time. Okay, so here, do not use a turtle that has the scrolls. Because you might lose the turtle. And all you can really do here, this is the hardest part of the whole game is so at the first part you can go left or you can go right if you go to the right you're gonna pick up uh, some stars if you go to the left you won't I'm just gonna go to the right because I feel more confident in it but what you do is you walk over and then right before the edge you let go of over and then here well I don't normally do it like that but um, just let go of walk and then here I do a quick turnaround at the very end and that seems to be the easiest way to do it for me now that is by far the worst part of the whole game so since I made it through that part without losing a turtle I shouldn't really have any problems and now here's the boss fight The boss fights really easy with Dawn you know if you're doing a challenge run where you don't want to use Dawn it's a little more difficult but all you do is stand here and attack upwards with Dawn and that's it that's the whole fight you only do damage to this thing while its mouth is open and you can hit that light bulb Uh, it's a real, real easy fight. You know, if you're doing a challenge run where you're not using Dawn or something, it's more difficult. But, you know, I just don't do it like that. I'm not I'm not here to show you how to do a challenging run. So I'm not here to show you how to do a speed run. This is just how to win the game. Okay, so we haven't taken any damage whatsoever. But I'm going to show you what to do 
if you had taken damage. Because you need to farm for pizza. And I might need to farm for pizza later on anyway, but if the Technodrome isn't the first sewer that I go to, it's just not going to be problematic. So, I'll show you one farming for pizza, just to show you how it's done. And you farm for pizza in this building right here. And you would only need to do this if your turtles had damage. So the first thing you want to do is jump up and attack those guys before they drop that ball. Like, that thing is carrying a ball. You need to jump up and hit it. And then there's just a half pizza right here and you grab it. And then that's it. Okay, you just grab this half pizza and you're done farming. Now there is a quarter pizza and a whole pizza in this building. But they're not worth farming. It's much faster to just go in, grab the half pizza and go out. Now also, down here, you can rescue a turtle if you lose one. Which we might. That could, that could very well happen. Okay, so now there's going to be three different sewers. There's one right here. There's one up these tracks, and then there's one in the upper right. You can see where they are on the map. That building, the white square to the upper left, that's just another building that isn't worth going in at all. So I always go in this sewer first, because this one seems to be the one most likely for the Technodrome to be in. But the order you want to go in is this one here, then you want to go in the one up the railroad tracks, and then you want to go in the, uh, the one to the upper right. And we may only see one. I find that this one is the one it's most likely to be in. So that's why I always do it first. So for this one, this guy is just a pain in the butt. So let him go to that side of the screen and then just start walking over and try to get him to go off screen. And then I just kind of power my way through this. I'm just trying to get through it quickly without taking damage. So like just use some skills here. That guy's going to roll under this thing. So just wait for him. Always stand underneath those exploding guys. That guy's going to go over your head. And then this next guy, he's just going to fall down the, that ladder right there. Okay? And that's it. That's how you get through that part with a minimal amount of damage. It's going to be a bit more of a pain in the butt if we have to go back out, which we might have to. Now for this part, the porcupine guy is the worst. So basically, you want him to be as far left as possible and then scroll it up, okay? We're not even going to fight that guy if we can help it. We just want to fight... Actually, I forgot. This is the wrong sewer, but that's fine. But yeah, don't even fight that guy. So we got no Technodrome there. So what you want to do is just make it out with taking as little damage as possible. And so, just power your way over. Luckily, that porcupine guy doesn't spawn. But when we go up this second ladder here, it's a pain in the butt. As soon as you get up, just start heading to the right. I'm actually going to switch on Leo's stars and just start shooting him off. Because that guy, he just causes you trouble. But then, once you're over here, just, just ignore these guys. Like, just, just run past them. Try to avoid damage. Use some skills. But for the most part, you can make it out of there pretty safely, as you can see. So now we've taken some damage uh, searching for the Technodrome. So now we do need to go in and farm. And like I said, it's just a real, real simple farming trip. You always want to jump up and hit this guy before he hits the ground. Because when he drops the ball, it's way worse. And if you're doing this with Dawn, like Dawn only takes one hit to kill those guys. And then that guy will only swoop down once, so then you can just ignore him. And then do the same thing again. Always jump up and attack these guys. Because they drop those balls, and the balls take two hits. And then we'll just put it on Wrath. And then we'll do one more farming run just to top Leo off, even though Leo doesn't really have that much damage. But this is just a real simple recovery from a bad sewer. Now, like, timing your attacks and stuff like that is just a skill you have to learn. Like, it's just practicing the game. You'll get better at timing attacks, and you won't uh, get hit as much. So, one fast way to get out of the sewers is just let a turtle die and then go rescue him. <laughs> but you can only do that once. You can only rescue a turtle once. So, this next sewer, you know, it's pretty likely that it'll be in here, and so we won't even see the third sewer. I'm actually kind of hoping it's not, just so I can show you all three. But then this sewer is going to look scary right off the bat, and it is. Now I find the best way to do this is just take your time, and you're going to want to fight this guy with Dawn. And so you got to sort of bait him to jump up by standing where he's not. And then he'll jump up, but like it takes time. And he's going to take three or four hits with Dawn. I think it's just three. 
Okay, so it's just three. Now the next guy, you can hit him with Dawn from up there, but I'm just going to take him out with scrolls. So just wait for him to get to the other side of the screen. And he takes two scrolls hits. So we want him to go over. And then two scrolls is it. And then we're going to power our way through the rest of this map. So stand underneath these guys when they explode. Wait for that guy to roll over you. Oh, he didn't roll over. He fell right on top of me. That guy will also fall down the stairs. We're going to see some more scary stuff here. We're going to see some porcupine guys. Oh, uh, the porcupine guys aren't here either. That are bugged out. But just start heading right. Just get those guys off the screen. This guy, you really need to take him out. But he ran away. That was a lucky break. For this part, that guy just falls off the screen. Always stand underneath these guys. That guy doesn't seem to explode a lot for some reason. Now you can if you can use your scrolls here. Like if you feel scared, you can use your scrolls. And then these guys be under them when they explode, under them when they explode, and then we'll see if it's a technodrome. Alright, and it is. So what I like to do for the technodrome is use scrolls. It's just easier. So what you want to do is you want to line up your scrolls to hit that thing that's shooting out the electricity at the front, the thing that the foot soldiers are popping out of, and um, one of those guns. If you can hit all three of those with a single scroll, you're doing a lot of damage to this thing. See, I took out, like, everything with that. Okay, now you don't have to use any scrolls on the Technodrome. Like, you can just use Dawn for the whole thing, and he will he will just take it out. But from here on out, it's like, just use Dawn, and if you time everything right, you can get two hits per uh, eyeball opening, but it doesn't matter, we're not in a hurry, we're just trying to win it. But yeah, if you time it right, you can get two hits per eyeball opening. Now, the next stage is the worst stage in the game, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it as safely as possible. Now, one reason why this stage is so horrible is because you're just going to be under attack right off the bat. And the enemy sweat, enemy set is bad no matter what. Whether it's the laser guys or the rat kings, it's bad no matter what. So Don hasn't taken any damage, so we'll just use him to get to this part. But we're in good shape. We're in really good shape right now. So we got a foot soldier there. We're going to have laser guys. Just sort of duck under him. Let him go past you. And don't try to fight him. It's just a waste of time to fight him. Okay, so for this next part, what's going to happen here is you got to do Don's downward attack. Or just use scrolls. I like to use scrolls. Now we're going to see laser guys up ahead. You do the exact same thing. You go over. You duck under him. Or if you miss the duck, just keep going. If you take damage, it's fine. You're, you can heal later on. Okay, for this next part, you either use Don or you use scrolls. Scrolls are slightly easier in my opinion, but Dawn also works. You always want to do the downward attack. As soon as you see a guy, you're going to see a guy appear on the left side of the screen when you're walking to the left. As soon as you see him duck and attack, otherwise you're going to get hit. So I like to just tap the button and walk over. And then as soon as you see a guy, well there's going to be a guy right here, or for some reason there's no guys at all. But as soon as you see a guy, you need to attack him and destroy that gun with Dawn. For some reason, we're not getting any guys. As soon as you see a guy, duck and do that attack. Okay? Like that. And the same thing. Now the guys are going to appear to the right. As soon as you see it, duck and attack. And then you'll attack it just in time. You know, unless you have super fast reflexes, then you might attack too early and get hit anyway. But typically, this doesn't fail for me. So this is the first pizza we're going to get. And also, I'm using, actually, Don, Don has such a long range, he can hit those guys. Alright, so we'll just top off Leo here, and I will continue using Don. But the same thing, as soon as you see a guy, you need to be attacking. So actually, if we just do this, this is the easy way. Just keep attacking with Don, and you should be fine. Now, I always end up taking damage up here with this, on this ladder. So either wait, wait for that duck guy to go off screen before you go up here, trust me on that. Okay, so up here there's going to be another guy. Just make sure you're not uh, standing next to him and just do a downward attack. Now we got to fight a dinosaur. So we're just in scroll territory here. So attack him twice with scrolls. 
and then go as far to the right as you can and not and avoid going as far left as possible because that guy will keep spawning if you keep going backwards. Alright, so Raph took a bit more damage than I would have liked there. But do the same thing here. Just get ready. Attack the guys as soon as they come. As soon as they come. Now, sometimes there will be a dinosaur down there. If he does, just let him come to the right and just hold left and jump over him and go past him. Now, we'll probably get attacked here, but we can take him out fairly quickly. Okay, so down here there's going to be more guys. We're probably going to get dragonflies attacking us. Just go over one screen at a time. Okay, so for this turret... Well, we can grab that. What you want to do is stand just out of range. Whoa, I thought I was going to take some damage there. And just take it out with Dawn like that. Now go over slowly. You don't want to miss this jump here. So you don't want these dragonflies knocking you off. Alright, so now we're in scroll territory. Or star territory. Like, you can try stars on this, but see, a lot of times that's just gonna, what's going to happen. So I'm actually just going to use uh, scrolls. It just takes two scrolls to take out this turret. And we'll just switch back to Dawn. And then jump over. Bait the screen a bit. For this one, we can take it out with Dawn. But make sure you don't jump into the bullets. So w let the bullets fire over you. And then we're going to get some more scrolls over here. So the best bet is probably to put them on Raph. And then we're going to give Raph the second pizza. So I'll just uh, stick with Dawn for now. Actually, I might give Dawn the second pizza because it doesn't matter. Okay, so then just go ahead and jump down. And then you don't know what enemy you're going to face here. It might be Rat Kings. It might be something else. It's probably best to just, just scroll it up, actually. Just fire a scroll out there. Okay, so that was a waste of a scroll, but it doesn't matter. And then you just fall down this one. There's nothing on the other side of that one. Just avoid these, but then you need to make this jump here, okay? So you need to be in a position where you can hit this thing with Dawn, or you can use some scrolls on it. And just take it out. Okay, I almost took damage there because I wasn't being careful. You need to make this jump, though. Like, you absolutely need to make it over here because this is where the pizza is. I'm really debating. I probably should just put it on Dawn. Because Raph will be okay. And, like, we we have plenty of scrolls. Like, Mike, Michelangelo still has all 40 scrolls. Always be careful coming up that ladder because that guy will be facing it. Now, when we fall down here, just head to the left. Just try to jump over enemies. You know, try not to fight anything that you don't have to. And then we just fall down again, and it's kind of the same deal here. Just work your way to the left. Depending on what enemies you get, you may need to just sort of power your way through it. If you get those guys, duck under it. Duck under it. And then you want to jump over this last turret here. This is going to be the best way to do this, is just jump, jump past it. Then just grab this thing, and then head to the left. And then we're on the hardest part of the whole game. But Dawn has some boomerangs, so that's good. Okay. Oh, crap. That was bad. That was really bad. Okay, so a lot of things can happen here. I'm just going to start with Raph and hope I don't lose Raph. We're probably going to have a lot of laser guys. Now, the hope is you can duck under them. So I say, just fire a scroll out there. Always have a scroll firing. If you see the laser guys, duck under them. Fire a scroll out, fire a scroll out, fire a scroll out, fire... I'm just showing you how to do this safety, safely. Alright, we need to be off a of raft now. So, I'm going to do Leo. Here, you have no choice but to take damage, so just start powering your way through this. Okay, you can't really get past those guys without taking damage, so all I'm doing is powering my way through it with a turtle that I feel okay taking a lot of damage. And then we're actually fine to use Dawn from here on out. So this part of the hall where it gets really narrow is actually the easiest part. What's going to happen is one of those guys is going to come after you, then a laser guy is going to come after you. For that guy, just take him out with Dawn or with a boomerang, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. For the other guy, just duck under it. He'll fire one laser at the top and then back off the screen so you don't have to fight him. And you just keep doing that. So you fight the duck guy. I call those guys duck guys because they're 
propellers look like beaks. And that's it. This is the easiest part of this hallway. Like the first part, you just do what I did. You power through, let your turtles take damage, use the invulnerability while it lasts, and then that's it. So for this part here, I like to just drop one scroll. So what you do is you drop a scroll and it'll take out... Well, if you drop it in the right spot, it'll take out two of those things. Okay, so now we're going to have a quick boss fight. The boss fight, all you do is as soon as the fight starts, turn around, fire a scroll at it, then wait for his invulnerability frame to end and fire another scroll, and that's it. Okay, that's how you do that boss fight. That's why we farm for the scrolls. I mean, look at this. We actually have enough scrolls that we really only needed to farm for 40 scrolls and we would have been fine, but I like to be safe. Okay, now for the shredder fight. What you're going to do is there's going to be two flat platforms. All you do is jump onto this platform right here and then wait for Shredder to appear and then once he does, just start firing scrolls at him. The scrolls will knock him back. Then he's going to jump up, you hit him again. He jumps up, you hit him again. He jumps up, you hit him again. This is the whole fight. And that's the whole game. Right there. Now a couple things. If you don't have any scrolls, you can actually do that with regular attacks. You just stand on that edge as close to the, where Shredder appears as possible, and you attack him, and he'll he'll get hit knocked back. It's the hardest with Raph, but you can do it with Raph. Raph also does the least amount of damage, but you can do it with any turtle, and you just keep knocking Shredder over. And that's it. That's the whole game. That's a very safe route for doing the game. Like, I had plenty of scrolls for backup. I could have used more more often, you know, through some of those dangerous areas in the airport, and it would have been fine. I could have walked over an item with the with one of the turtles with the scrolls and I would have been fine. And that's just it. That's how you do the game. So this has been Jack Everett. Thanks for watching. We'll talk at you later. Bye bye.